Dr. Olga Lutsenko grew up in the Soviet Union when owning a Bible could cost you your job or your freedom. Her husband, Fred, was raised in a Christian home in Red China, where his family was constantly harassed by authorities. Their organization, Kindness International, has made the Bible a foundational book in what was an atheistic educational system in Russia and the Ukraine. It, it's an amazing story. Um, a love of the Bible, folks, uh, really started early in both your lives, surprisingly. Fred, yours was a Christian family. Yes, uh, my parents uh, were born into Christian families. And um, yes, and they fled Soviet Union into China, uh, fleeing for their lives because they were Christians. Mm -hmm. And Olga, your parents were communist. Yes, they, they did. Uh, but my grandmother, she was a Christian and she, uh, she uh, kept her Bible in secret place. Yeah. Wasn't it the wood pile? It was, yeah, wood yeah. storage under the wood in a very safe place. And when I turned five, she decided to introduce me to the Bible in the darkness of the wood storage. And uh, I, in, I just it was started in a very nice sunny uh, Sunday morning. And we sit down on the bench and she put on the candle and started reading me the Bible. And uh, just telling me Bible stories in simple language, which was understandable for me. And since this uh, Sunday, every Sunday we spent together and share, and she shared me Bible stories and told me what God is about and how important it is in my life. She had huge risk because whole family can go to prison, but she knows that the seeds she put in my heart will grow up, and they did. And those seeds she was planting were, were capturing your heart. As a five-year-old, you loved those stories. Oh, yes. Uh, I was uh, able to spend this time with my grandma for three years because when I turned eight, we moved from this city uh, on to the other one. But it was in my heart. Mm. I remember that. And, uh, and the life changed, and I had a chance to uh, concentrate on that. All the Bible stories, as soon as I opened my Bible, my own Bible, and received when I was only 40 years old, yeah, all yeah, the stories yeah. came back to me. Yeah, we got to come back to that. Hold that mm -hmm. thought. Hold that thought, because the seeds were planted, right. but you didn't know the Lord yet. No. Grandma moved away, and your life went in another direction, very academic yes. path. Now, Fred, you, your parents are, are uh, your dad was actually a lay preacher. Yes, he was. Uh, yes. Your, your life was steeped in the Bible, but much difficulty because of your faith. Yes, uh, my father was a lay preacher, and um, while in China, he preached and uh, it was under much pressure from the state. Uh, our home was raided constantly. They were looking for the Bible. Mm -hmm. But my father somehow uh, hid the Bible. We never knew where he hid it, but every morning at four o'clock in the morning, he would pull it out and read it to us. Uh, we read the Bible every day. Four o'clock in the four morning. Four o'clock in the morning every day and would pray. Wow. Now yes. at the age of 15, you made a courageous decision. Talking about uh, risk-taking today, that was a risk to choose Christ for yourself. Yes, yes, it was uh, at the age of 15. Uh, while in Red China, I uh, had to decide whether I'm going to serve the Lord or forsake the Lord and pursue uh, education and career. And I chose to serve the Lord. Wow. Now, Olga, yes. meanwhile, You've got these little seeds that are eternal in your heart. Uh, but you went on to, to great conquests academically. How did God bring you to himself? I would mention that uh, there was once during university ages, I was introduced uh, to the Bible, like Bible was in the library of the university. And because uh, during the atheism lessons, we learned from the negative uh, side about the Bible. So your whole life you were being steeped in atheism. Right, right. So, and uh, I, when I saw the Bible first, I just opened it and the story, opened the story my grandma read me about the, when I was a little girl just came in my mind and it just touched my heart. I tried to change my life, but there was no any Christian around who can help me because my grandma was far away from, from Moscow. So, 
And then life changed when I became to be responsible for the moral education in the Department of Education for Russian Federation, and we started researching what kind of morality will replace the communist morality, which was in Soviet Union for 75 years. What, for what seventy-five position that you would be the person who would determine the educational plan for the morality of Russia? Well, not only myself, I was responsible for the moral education, but there was a corporate decision. There was key educators, officials who come together in a as a mm -hmm. team and did research and find out that Russia belonged to European civilization and European civilization based on the Bible morality. That so was that's the why connection. That, yes, that's why the uh, Russian um, authorities decided that Russian children should be introduced to the Bible as a source of morality. Wow. Kindergarten right through university, right, 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 right across the board. What does, did this do to you personally as you were researching and getting back into the Bible? During this research, uh, I received a Bible, my own Bible in the Russian language, first time in my life, and I said, read it. Um, it just, I did, I did it any time I had time. It was a wonderful book, and uh, so reading this book, I received Jesus Christ in my heart and became to know the Lord through reading the Bible. Because now it's you a say powerful you were, book. Uh, powerful. You say you were absolutely changed, transformed. I changed, trans yeah. Uh, and, it, and everybody could see it. Even I would come to the office uh, in the Department of Education and my colleagues said, oh, but you changed so much. What's happened with you? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I became to be a happy person. I just clear out and uh, changed my relationship with my colleagues, with my family, with everybody. Because I became to be a different person. Now, how did God bring you two little dynamos together, Brad? It's a, it, it's a long story. I usually give tell, us give us the capsule version. Yeah, I, usually, I mean, you're in China and you're in Moscow. That's right, and I had to circle the globe so, several times to uh, Catch her? find her. That's <laughs> right, and came to Moscow Department of Education, and there she was, <laughs> just glowing. Says, oh, yeah, all that time <laughs> wasted. <laughs> yeah, we've met at the Department of Education. We were. Uh, my organization was supplying uh, creation materials. Uh -huh. We were engaged in uh, creation uh, science with Creation Science Institute together uh, working with the uh, Soviet at the time uh, a scientific community and later with the Russian scientific community and uh, Department of Education of Russian Federation decided to have creationism as a foundation for Christianity on which they would build the Christian foundation for their education system and provide creationism as an alternative to evolution. So that's how I met Dr. Olga. This, is, this story is like a fairy tale, but it's true. It's amazing. 1992, you founded Kindness International and came to Canada in 1996. You, you're both living in BC now. How often do you mm -hmm. go over to see all that's happening over there? We're still uh, coming to uh, and spending a lot of time in Russia and Ukraine. Um, I would say the most of the time, because uh, we uh, have uh, to do that. We're doing uh, seminars, preparation for the seminars for the teachers, international conferences. We are publishing Eternal World magazine for the teachers mm -hmm. in Russia, and now we're publishing Eternal World magazine in Ukraine, in Ukrainian language, mm -hmm. and it's totally different issue. And uh, we're doing international camp uh, every year, first two weeks of July. And we have representative have five countries uh, coming to this camp. What uh, happens at the camp? Is this uh, recreational or is it training? 